Jesus goes quickly to the gate and hastens along the road leading to the Kidron and to Gethsemane and thence to the field of the Galileans. Among the olive trees of the mountain, he meets with Judas of Kerioth, who is also going up fast towards the field, which is awaking. Judas makes a gesture as if he were frightened, finding himself in front of Jesus. Jesus looks at him fixedly, without speaking. I went to take food to the lepers, but I found two at Hinnom, five at Siloam, the others cured. They are still there, but they're cured so well that they asked me to inform the priest. I'd gone down at daybreak to be free later. It will cause a stir. Such a large number of lepers cured at the same time after you bless them in the presence of so many people. Jesus does not speak. He lets him speak. He does not say, you did the right thing or anything else concerning Judas's action and the miracle. But stopping suddenly and staring at the apostle, he asks him, Well, the fact that I left you freedom and money, what change has it made? You may recall from my video where Judas is caught stealing, at the end of that episode where Jesus has exorcised Judas of Satan, to a degree, because Judas will not renounce Satan. So exorcism doesn't work when you don't renounce the evil. That's what our priests say again and again. But Jesus, at the end of that encounter with Judas, says, I'll give you back um, charge of the money because it's now useless to stop you having access to the money to try and help you resist your passion, which is money, amongst other things. So Judas says, what do you mean? This, I'm asking you whether you have sanctified yourself since I gave you back freedom and money. And just again, pausing, Judas would not turn to Jesus to be released from Satan. Judas spoke of, well, he's going to sort himself out, basically, going to put himself right. And Jesus said, you can't do it, you need me. But Judas doesn't respond and then leaves. So that's why Jesus is saying, have you sanctified yourself? And you understand me. Ah, Judas, bear it in mind. Always bear it in mind. You are the one whom I loved more than anybody else. Receiving from you less love than all the others have given me. Nay, I received hatred greater because it is the hatred of one whom I treated as a friend than the fiercest hatred of the fiercest Pharisee. And remember also this, that not even now I hate you, but as far as the Son of Man is concerned, I forgive you. Go now. Nothing more is to be said between you and me. Everything has already been done. Judas would like to say something, but Jesus, with an authoritative gesture, beckons to him to go on. And Judas, his head lowered like a defeated man, goes on. At the boundary of the field of the Galileans, the apostles and Lazarus's two servants are ready. Where have you been, master? And you, Judas, were you together? Jesus prevents Judas's reply, saying, I had something to say to some hearts. Judas went to the lepers, but they are all cured except seven. Oh, why did you go? I wanted to come too, says the zealot to be free now to come with us. Let us go. We shall enter into town by the sheep gate. Let us make haste, says Jesus again. He is the first to set out, passing through the olive groves that take one from the field, situated almost halfway between Bethany and Jerusalem, to the other little bridge that spans the Kidron near the sheep gate. 
Some houses of peasants are scattered along the slopes and almost at the bottom, near the water of the torrent, a ruffled fig tree dangles over the stream. Jesus turns his steps towards it and he searches among the large thick leaves to see whether there are any ripe figs. But the fig tree is nothing but leaves, many useless leaves, but there is not one fruit on its branches. You are like many hearts in Israel. You are neither kind nor pitiful to the Son of Man. May you never bear fruit again, and may no one ever eat of your fruit in future, says Jesus. The apostles look at one another. They are surprised at Jesus' anger at the barren tree, which is probably a wild one, but they do not say anything. Only later, after crossing the Kidron, Peter asks him, Where did you eat? Nowhere. Oh, then you are hungry. There is a shepherd over there pasturing some goats. I will go and ask for some milk for you. I will not be long. And he strides away and comes back cautiously with an old bowl full of milk. Jesus drinks it. And with a caress, he hands the bowl back to the young shepherd who had come with Peter. 